So let us uh, come and discuss these things. We know digoxin was used uh, since long. And in 1954, this was approved by US FDA. And since that, we are using continuously. And me as a cardiologist, practicing cardiologist, I'm confessing I'm using digoxin here and there. Problem arises when, and this is true, not only uh, matter of a fred, toxicity of digoxin. This need to discuss with the patient this drug I am using, why I am using, and how to reduce their toxicity and how to monitor it. So as a physician, as a cardiologist, we know everyone having their ECG in our clinic. Go for free ECG. Let us monitor their side effect and interaction. So this is my purview regarding this dioxin. Coming to their effect and uh, electrophysiological and electrocardiographic effect, this has some effect on the neurohomoral axis, electrophysiological axis at cellular level and at hemodynamics level. At cellular level, we know this inhibits the enzyme sodium potassium ATPase, and this in turn, there is an excess of sodium ion in the cardiac myocytes, and this in turn causes diminished extrusion of calcium ion from the cardiac myocyte, and cardiac myocyte get overladed with the calcium ion, and this in turn causes increased force of contraction. There is a various mechanism of action, cardiac, extra cardiac excess, vascular smooth muscle cells. So this is a positive inotropic effect, negative chronotropic effect, and negative dromotropic effect, if I will summarize it like this. There is some pros and cons related to this digoxin, uh, uh, and what is the pros and cons? If you see the benefit of digoxin, really this is a very cheaper molecule and we can use easily. This having positive force of contraction, having some anti-adrenergic property, improve ejection fraction. This is a wonderful molecule, especially when you are being the poor LV function. What happened in uh, half-ref patient? Nowadays in our armamentarium, we are RNE and SGL T2 inhibitor now. That is a very cost effective. But when SGL2 inhibitor was very expensive and RNA is still expensive, what we can do for this half rep patient? And this is true regarding this digoxin that this never causes a reduction in the mortality. Absolutely true. So many data we saw DIG study, delivered trial, so and so, that this never causes reduction in the mortality. But this is well proven fact, and that is head to head comparison from the beta blocker, calcium channel blocker, and the uh, this diuretic that this causes reduction in the recurrent hospitalization. So, if someone's very cost effective molecule, if this has property to reduce the recurrent hospitalization, definitely having some beneficial role in our community uh, to prevent a recurrent hospitalization. But the, there is always concern while using the digoxin. Therapeutic, uh, the range for this uh, molecule is very narrow. So, uh, uh, therapeutic range is around 0.5 to 0.9 nano, nanogram only. And digoxin, uh, this toxicity arises when this concentration raised above the 1 nanogram per ml. And usually, if it is more than the 1.5, there's always a problem arises. Drug interaction is very important. If you remember our pharmacology and medicine classes, Digoxin can cause any type of arrhythmia except type 2 AV block, venky wake phenomena. So this causes brady tacky arrhythmia and so on and so on. Any kind of side effect is possible with the digoxin. This is some preparation and that is the old way. Regarding current status and uh, SEC and HA, uh, this is one DIG study, uh, Digitalis Investigation Group, and they found digoxin never reduced nor increase overall the mortality through it reduced hospitalization both overall and for worsening heart failures. So uh, concern is always there. Uh, right now while managing half rep patient, me and all my friends, we have a group of drugs. But uh, how to reduce the recurrent hospitalization? So uh, uh, issue concerned with digoxin, I will come in the subsequent slide, what should be taken in this, uh, in, I mean, consideration. Subsequently, it was demonstrated that higher blood level of digoxin were associated with 
worse outcome while lower blood level associated with better outcome. So what does it mean? Therapeutic concentration of this digoxin is important. And practically what happened? Most of time this always we are using where LV function is poor and always we are having diuretic subset when using the digoxin or rheumatic mitral stenosis or half patient. And both digoxin and this diuretic this causes hypokalemia and this is a very important soil for development of arrhythmia. So this thing should be uh, maintained. So therapeutic concentration as I mentioned this is the 0.5 to 0.9 nanogram per ml. And if it increases more than 1, 1.2 and 2 nanogram, this seems to be worsening outcome. Blood level of digoxin, as I discussed, this is the important parameter while managing this, uh, using this digoxin. This uh, debate regarding this mortality rate and digoxin, uh, is it true that it increases mortality? Not at all. This is a very smart analysis. And, and this was used in two subset of patient, in, in uh, patient with a poor LV function, with the sinus sedum, and in the atrial fibrillation patient. Always when digoxin was used in the atrial fibrillation patient to control the heart rate, there was no worsening of mortality as the comparator group that was the placebo as, com as com uh, in the digoxin arm. Digoxin reduces the incidence of death or hospitalization due to worsening heart failure. Yeah. Uh, there is definitely reduction in the recurrent hospitalization in the worsening heart failure. Incidence of death or hospitalization due to worsening heart failure in the digoxin or placebo arm. This is uh, going to compare here. You see in the digoxin arm and the placebo arm, arm and having a P value significant less than 0 0.001. So recurrent hospitalization reduction was noted in digoxin arm as compared to placebo. Digoxin did not increase or decrease the mortality, but it did reduce the readmission for the systolic heart failure. As I mentioned in my discussion, when their LV function is good and patient is not having the sinus rhythm, patient having the atrial fibrillation of fast ventricular rate, this molecule is always a very wonderful molecule. Digoxin therapy may be improved prognosis in advanced heart failure with atrial fibrillation under normal optimal medical therapy, but no patient in the sinus rhythm. This is the one trial uh, to arm uh, and uh, this comparison, one patient with a low ejection fraction uh, and 40 months survival was uh, studied in the sinus rhythm and atrial fibrillation arm. So uh, you see in the patient when they were having atrial fibrillation, cumulative 40 months survival in patient with the atrial fibrillation uh, is stratified according to digoxin medication, so better response while using the atrial fibrillation arm as compared to sinus rhythm arm. There, this result shows that this may be improved patient selection for the digoxin therapy. The selection of patient is important. Coming to digoxin significantly improve all cause mortality in the atrial fibrillation patient with systolic severely reduced LV function. As I discussed, uh, uh, but digoxin is not a good molecule while you use in the um, uh, sinus rhythm or good LV function. This one, rate AF study, rate atrial fibrillation study, and this was uh, discussing the different NYHA classes uh, from class one to class four, and it was found that when it was given in the NYHA class four patient, patient was severely symptomatic, and with a very poor LV function, outcome was better, and it was persisting improvement in the reduction in the recurrent hospitalization was noted up to 12 months in when NYHA functional class, class was high as compared to NYHA class one and two. So it is possible that result of this rate F trial will rejuvenate digoxin therapy for heart rate control in patient with atrial fibrillation. Despite the result of rate F trial, I am sure that debate over the benefit versus risk associated with this 20 year old drug will be continued. Yes, debate and discussion should be always there. This is one important trial, device registry that is latestly carried out in the 2014 and and uh, yet a comparator one uh, even this uh, icd and and other molecule was there so what the recommendation regarding the use of digoxin uh, there is a brazilian study and canadian study esc sec and ha 
One thing, uh, uh, be cautious when you are using uh, uh, digoxin in the atrial fibrillation, in the supraventricular arrhythmia with this poor LV function. But if some, some problem there in the accessory pathway is there, never use digoxin. That is not supposed to be a better drug. This is good drug for supraventricular arrhythmia and atrial fibrillation, but not when patient is. So this should be ruled out accessory pathway. So what the uh, uh, recommendation for the ESC guideline in the management of uh, the role of uh, uh, digoxin and where we can put it. So you can use the, uh, this molecule, this was carried on the 2016, recurrent in heart failure, uh, heart rate control in patient with AF with the ejection fraction both with less than 40 and more than the 40. I'm not telling 55 and 60. You can use with the reduced ejection fraction and maybe with the mid-range ejection fraction, not more than the 50. So um, where is the stand for ACC and HA? That is a big boss for deciding every drug and class of recommendation. So recommendation for the pharmacological treatment for the stage C half rep patient. What does it mean in stage C, ACC classification? Patient is strongly symptomatic and having some structural and functional heart disease. So stage T half rep patient, the reference studies that support the recommendation are summarized that this is class 2B indication and level of evidence is B to R. So in patient with symptomatic half rep patient despite GDMT guideline directed medical therapy for who is unable to tolerate GDMT, digoxin might be considered to decrease the recurrent hospitalization. 2B level of evidence B to R, we can use this molecule, this is a recommendation from the ACCHA for reducing recurrent hospitalization. There is some ongoing trial is going on, digit FHF decision trial and uh, DGSTA trial is going on, and there is still very good hope for a uh, molecule in the future. So uh, before, thank you, I'll summarize in my words, because sir is here and sir given me this talk. He should we say bye-bye to this molecule. Uh, uh, in my words, if I will say, uh, uh, I will not say bye-bye, but uh, I will be, uh, patient is specific, uh, is it really requirement for the patient? So uh, I will choose subset of patient that uh, my patient, the rheumatic mitral stenosis, uh, and uh, I know a few intervention cardiologists are sitting here in the government setup, if you are sending in the Lari and PGI for the PTMC, even they cost around 20 to 25,000, and for valve replacement, 150,000. And waiting time is three years what to do with that kind of patient. So that kind of patient, uh, I am supplementing digoxin with the fast ventricular rate, with the atrial fibrillation, with the diuretic and supporting medication. Regarding this half rep patient, now we have the option like SGLT2 and ARNI. Now SGLT2 is uh, quite uh, cost effective. So in that cases, okay, might be safe, we can buy, buy, but while re managing the rheumatic mitral stenosis, there is still hope that we can make it uh, customize that uh, our patient is having fast ventricular rate with atrial fibrillation not in uh, sinus rhythm. There is no possibility of toxicity for in the recurrent visit. Let us go and uh, check their uh, ECG, maybe complementary ECG and see the uh, some electrolyte abnormality. That can be judged by ECG. So this thank you all from my side. So there is still hope and some ongoing trial and some pleiotropic benefit might be considered with this molecule is going on. Thank you. This is all from my side.